All right, the, uh, the mathematics of the perfect shuffle. We're going to look at the out, the out pharaoh shuffle. And um, it takes actually, it takes eight perfect shuffles to uh, restore the, the deck back to its original order. So uh, we're going to be doing some computation. We're going to look at order eight and how these uh, permutations uh, affect the deck and the positioning. Um, this is what a, a perfect pharaoh shuffle looks like, though. See how every every card interweaves perfectly. Um, also, too, here if you if you look, the original order we have the the, the black thirteen is on the uh, is on the bottom of the deck, and then you have the red one on the top of the deck. And with the out pharaoh, pharaoh shuffle, the uh, the bottom the bottom card will stay on the bottom of the deck, and the top card will stay on the top of the deck. Um, and it it's the exact opposite with the with the in pharaoh shuffle. You'll see uh, the red thirteen, which would be at position twenty six. Um, would go to the bottom of the deck and then uh, your red one is shifted to where it's going to go to the uh, to the second position um, and uh, the two difference too the, the two differences between the uh, the two also is uh, the out pharaoh shuffle is, is order 8 and the in pharaoh shuffle is order 52 so it, it would take 52 perfect in Pharaoh shuffles to return back to the original state. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and here's just kind of looking at, at an out Pharaoh um, position changing. Um, and you can see, even done with eight cards, uh, you would take the, the top half, which I have in blue, and the bottom half of the deck I have in red here. And um, you can see how they they kind of interweave, and you get this blue red blue red. Um, but you can also see how the the positions of the first and the eighth card stay in those fixed positions. Um, that's kind of interesting. And and also that if if you're only using eight cards to do an out and you're doing out pharaoh shuffles, it's it's going to be order three. So it's only going to take. Uh, um, three out pharaoh shuffles to get your eight cards back to their original order. Um, and then if we look at uh, at cards at uh, at position K, we're going to use a K variable in a 52 card deck. Um, you're going to get two equations: one that deals with the top half of the deck, and the second equation which will deal with the bottom half of the of the deck. And um, these two equations will uh, will calculate will be able to calculate uh, how how any position in the deck will move um, like once you do an out for a shuffle and say you're at the seven, you memorize a card in the seventeenth position um, with these calculations it'll be able to tell you um, which position um, that card will move to after you do an, an out pharaoh shuffle um, and actually if you if you look at it uh, 17 just used as an, as an example um, is less than or equal to 26 so 17 times 2 is going to be 34 and then minus 1 so it's actually going to go um, from the 17th position, you do an out pharaoh shuffle, it's going to go to the 33rd position. So it's kind of interesting. Um, and actually, we're, we're going to dive more into depth, and we're going to put together a chart. But uh, let's look at some C programming. Um, we're going to use our K position equations and determine the position of uh, each card in this 8-order system. All right, um, 
First, let's uh, change directories into my programming directory and then into my C programming directory. Here we're going to make a directory Faro for our Faro program. Uh, change into that directory. Here I'm going to use vim as my text editor and create a file called Faro.c. Okay, first I'm going to include our standard and out header file. Um, how it's labeled it too. This This is a program to calculate the positional value values of outfair permutations. Perfect. All right. Now let's uh, go ahead and start our our main code block. And let's put in our return zero. And let's initialize some some variables. Okay, so we got x, and that will be uh, our uh, order variable. And let's initialize k, and k is going to be our uh, positional. Now we need to prompt our user for uh, for our positional variable. So we're going to use a printf function here. I'm going to say please okay, please enter the positional value. Next we're going to use scanf Scan that function to get uh, information from the keyboard. And we need our amper stamp for address of our K variable. Okay, we're going to start a for loop now. Um, and we're going to set our x equal to 0. And we're doing order 8, so x is less than 8 and we're actually going to uh, increment our x variable as we go along. Um, the next thing, I'm going to try and get some space to keep us in the middle here. Uh, the next thing we're going to need is some conditionals. So we know that uh, our position, our positional value can't be um, less than 1 and it can't be greater than 52. So we're going to say if uh, k is less than 1, and we'll Okay, and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to do another printf function. And we're going to say and then 
we'll just actually do a break statement to break out of the to break out of our uh, for loop. Um, let me go ahead and go back to normal mode so I can yank these lines. I'm just going to copy this. will be when our position is greater than 52. Okay, now let's set some other conditions here. Um, we have fixed positions to where um, K doesn't change, and we have two fixed positions. We have uh, position 1 and position 52 do not change in the, uh, the out pharaoh shuffle, so we're going to say uh, if uh, our positional value of k is equal to 1 and we'll just say just actually this will just return the value of 1 if 1 is entered um, and we're also going to use a break statement to break out of the loop Here we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to say if k is equal to 52, then that's also a fixed position. So um, Okay, next thing I'm going to do is a series of uh, nested if statements. So I'm going to say if um, x is less than 8, going back to our for loop, Inside this if statement, we're going to use uh, the condition of uh, k. So we're going to say if uh, our k value is less than or equal to 26. So this is actually a condition that's dealing with the uh, top half of the deck. So we're going to say. Position one, positional values in the top half of the deck, yeah. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is increment x. Or, yeah, x. Um, and then we're going to set k equal to k times 2 minus 1. space there so it separates the numbers as we're going through our uh, our cycles okay I'm just gonna copy that because it's similar um, we're gonna do another nested if statement we're gonna say if x is still less than Say if k 
is greater than 26. And that's a condition of the bottom. So here we're going to increment x again, and we're going to set k equal to k times 2, and this time it's going to be minus 52. Put one more uh, print f, and I'm, I'm just going to actually. Oops, I'm going to just put a new line here just to keep everything neat. Um, let me just kind of go through real quick to see if I. use GCC dash O for our out file the uh, we'll call it Faro and the file we're compiling is Faro.c. Okay so everything looks good. Let's run our program. Okay first let's test our uh, condition our conditional our conditionals that we set. Uh, so we know that our positional value cannot be less than 1, so let's say negative 4. This is an invalid value. Okay, And we also know that uh, it can't be greater than 52, so let's just say 67. Okay, um, And then we set conditional values uh, at fixed positions, so we know 1 is a fixed position and should return 1, which it does. And 52 is also a fixed position. Okay. Um, actually, what I'm going to do here is uh, let's make a, a Faro table. Okay. side number so okay. all right we know that our first value 1 is in a fixed position so let's uh, let's look at uh, value 2 okay so what, what this tells us here is position 2 the card that's in position 2 after one out pharaoh shuffle will move to position 3 the card that's in position 2 after two out pharaoh shuffles We'll move to position five. Three out pharaoh shuffles. It'll then be in position nine. And after eight pharaoh shuffles, um, it moves back to position two, which makes sense. Um, after eight pharaoh shuffles, um, it restores the deck back to its uh, original order. So. The next value we, we're going to look at is uh, 
Act 4. One thing to pay pay attention to, also that we uh, none of these numbers in the table are repeating themselves, so we're covering all 52 positions in the deck. Okay, this next one, this next uh, positional value, 18, is kind of interesting. See, what happens is uh, 18, 35, 18, 35, and what, what's, what's going on here is every time you do it, an out pharaoh shuffle, you have two cards that are switching places in the deck. Um, so the card that's in position 18 moves to position 35 and then the card that's in position 35 moves to the 18th position which is just an interesting observation um, and our last value would be 20 well and then our fixed value of 52 but uh, just looking at this at this uh, positional table that we created um, there's a lot of interesting things you can do as far as uh, just math and then uh, pharaoh shuffles in general but just with the out pharaoh shuffle knowing any um, as far as mnemonics go being able to memorize a certain card in a certain position and then doing a few out shuffles you, you would be able to to predict or know exactly where that card is going to be so i mean say say you have a you know you know the ace of spades is in the eighth position you know after um two out pharaoh shuffles it's going to go to the 29th position you know after three it's going to go back to the sixth position um but yeah, you can use any of these numbers to um, to tell where where that card will end up. So it's it's kind of interesting. Let's move on and check out some other things. Okay, I'm back. Uh, this is uh, just looking at our our position changing uh, chart that we put together from our calculations. Um, we can see also that it it matches up with this graph, with, which is is kind of interesting. How you can um, just looking at the patterns involved with uh, with the eight eight different shuffles, you can see how the cards move around, and it's kind of interesting. And then I'm just further looking at this at this graph. We have uh, our function of f of k and then we have our our two equations for the top and bottom half of the deck um, and you can see I I labeled uh, our uh, our fixed positions uh, 1 and 52 um, and you can also see that um, I labeled 18 and 35 which which was the the position I talked about that uh, was unique to where it you have two cards that are, are are continuously changing places and if and as you can see in this in this uh, permutation graph it actually uh, makes a makes a circle so it's uh, it's just kind of interesting um, just some kind of um, magicians and cardists I'd like to 
pay homage to as far as the Pharaoh Shuffle. And uh, one of the masters here is uh, Juan Tamaris, and he's a, a Spanish magician. Um, and he, he's actually known uh, for several things, uh, mainly his, his book on mnemonics called Mnemonica, which is a, a, a real interesting book, but he uses several different pharaoh shuffles to put, to put a deck into his own order, which when you first look at it, it looks random and it's, uh, which is where the mnemonics comes, comes from and it, uh, it's actually in, in an order that, that he knows by heart and um, he does several things with that. He really designed a, an entire art form around um, the mnemonics for the deck that he he uses. Um, and it, it's really interesting. But uh, yeah, I'd just like to pay hom homage to him as far as the Pharaoh Shuffle and its uses. Um, someone else that's amazing is uh, Richard Turner and... Uh, this guy can manipulate cards uh, better than anyone I have seen. I don't know. But uh, most people will take and do a Pharaoh Shuffle. Most people that you see do them, they'll take and they'll line the two decks up and... Uh, to where he, he does it on the table and he does it... Uh, just seamlessly one after another and uh, he, he really makes makes it look like an art um, but yeah he's a known uh, what they they would call a card mechanic um, one of the best probably card cheaters in the world interesting guy and also too uh, which I haven't even pointed out is uh, the guy's actually blind um, but, uh, yeah, I've seen several documentaries. One that's really interesting to check out is uh, it's called Delt, and it's kind of all about him. Um, but there's other other magicians even talked about how he could, uh, you could hand him like a pack of eight cards underneath the table, and he would take them in his hand, and he would he would know that there's eight cards there. He's also... Uh, so synonymous with uh, what you call traditionally cut cards. They used to, back in the day, cut cards um, from, I think, face to bottom, and it would uh, create kind of the, the bevel, the beveled edge would, would be in that direction, and then um, the mechanics and the, the machinery changed to where they started cutting them um, the reverse way and uh, Richard Turner kind of uh, amongst other magicians I'm sure noticed that they interweaved better um, the older way they were cut so he has several decks that he even put out that are traditionally cut um, and that's where he kind of becomes synonymous with that with that term um, but yeah, very interesting guy. Um, also, the uh, Alex Elmsley. If, if you ever heard of the Elmsley count, it's uh, a way to to count. It's usually done with four cards, um, but you can you can show like your spectator. You can show um, four cards to where you know one can either e even be face up. And he does this Elmsley count. He does this count where um, it makes it look like the card kind of disappears. Uh, but that's one thing that he's famous for. But he's also, uh, he's a Scottish magician and he's uh was also a computer programmer. So he has several books out. Um, but uh, he discovered with Pharaoh Shuffles um, to bring a card um, on the top of the, of the pack or deck to any desired position you would subtract one from that desired position 
then express the result as a binary number um, and then use it as instructions for a series of in and out uh, Faro shuffles and the card will end where you want it to end in that position um, so I recently read up with on this and seen seen it in practice and it's it's interesting but um, yeah so in in this process the binary um, the ones would represent in shuffles while the the zeros will re represent out shuffles and then I have an example listed here and I got this all off of uh, Wikipedia but uh, the example is if the top card say you wanted that top card and you wanted to move it to the 23rd position uh, first you would take 23 subtract 1 and you get 22 and uh, that number in binary would be 10110 so then you'd do a series of shuffles you would do uh, an in out in in out and uh, that card would move to the 23rd position so very very interesting Ah, oh, that's just some I'm just wrapping it up that's just um, some magicians and cardists that I'd like to pay homage to as far as uh, uh, how the math and and uh, how the cards and just everything kind of progressed through these these three guys so uh, yeah if you're interested you know check it out and I appreciate it have a good one you can't see me anymore You're not behind the tightest door You're not be searching for something